Hey everyone, welcome to October 12th, Tuesday edition of our community call for chaos. I'm Elizabeth, I'm the community manager, and I have enabled um, the live transcription, but you can, so you, you may have to do that personally. I don't know if it shows up for everybody or if you have to go in and do that, but if you want that, that's available to you. Um, I will type the uh, agenda and minutes here one more time. And I, I still haven't gotten the bill for our enablement of live transcription. So <laughs> it's, it's all good. It's, it's all in the Linux Foundation vortex. And you we might never... have to do like a blood drive or something to pay, <laughs> pay for it. I don't know, bake sale or something. I don't know. We'll see how that goes. <laughs> so what is that? Better to ask for forgiveness than permission or something like that. So yeah, we'll see how that, how that all trans transcribes or transpires, I should say. Um, okay, so let's get started. Uh, let me just share my screen. And we can go from here. So the first thing is, let's move the chat window over. The first thing is, um, just in case anyone missed it, um, they did announce, I should say they, Demetrius from GitHub announced at uh, one of the keynotes at OSSNA that um, All In is now open. And um, if you've not heard, Chaos is um, one of the founding partners of this project. So we're super excited. Uh, it was really well received. And um, if you're not familiar with it, it's it, the aim of it is to open source, quote unquote, um, diversity, equity, inclusion in open source. So um, there's a bunch of different companies and organizations, universities that are all coming together to try to work on this, uh, work on these issues together in a transparent and um, iterative and collaborative way. So um, Chaos is really happy to be part of that um, for obvious reasons. We care a lot about diversity, equity, inclusion here, but uh, also open source health in general. So that it's really great. Um, there's two sides of this. There's an all-in for maintainers and an all-in for students. Um, Chaos is mostly gonna be helping out with the all-in for maintainers. Um, so there's that. Uh, right now they're doing a um, <clears throat> maintainers listening tour. So listening to open source maintainers on what challenges they have um, trying to improve diversity, equity, inclusion in the projects, things that they're doing well, things that have, they've tried and haven't worked or have worked. So um, it's just uh, really, it is what it says. It's, it's just a listening tour. So um, just listening to what maintainers have to say. Um, and then from there, that will um, kind of guide the rest of the project. Um, so I think it's overall, uh, there's a, I, I dropped the link in here in the minutes right here. <clears throat> if you're interested in reading more about it, um, it's it's all right there. So does anybody have any questions uh, or something to add to that? I'm looking at you, Matt and Sean, for that. But. No, I think you uh -huh. got it. Yeah, I think you nailed it. It is really great working with Demetrius and her team. So. Any questions from anybody else? Comments? Okay, then we'll just move on. Um, okay, so um, I was getting ready. So Yash had submitted a, a PR to um, add this reference to the readmes for all the working groups. And if you were not present, at when we had this conversation <clears throat> a few weeks ago, months ago, I don't know when, um, about this new thing that GitHub has called the citation.cff file. Um, we did talk about that in the value working group and then as well in the community group. Um, but as I was going to uh, merge in Yasha's PR to add that, um, there were some questions that came up. So um, we just wanted to kind of revise this, or, or revive, I should say, I can talk, revive this conversation. Um, and allow those who have not had a chance to participate in the conversations before um, to, to express their concerns. And I'm looking for Kevin and I don't see him here. He was kind of the one that wanted to. Um, I'm, I'm here. You are? I'm so sorry, I don't see you on the list. I'm no, hiding. I'm okay, cool, go for it. Uh, so I, I see that Sean had put a, put a question in too and that, that's actually very similar to my question. So it looks like right now this we're we're set up to uh, or or I should one of my questions. It looks like right now we're set up to cite the working group repository. Uh, and the question I have is, uh, why why are we going at that level? Uh, 
so the 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 metrics the metrics that we're releasing they're not software they're documents so would we be better off using a some sort of documentation citation format rather than uh this this software citation format that we're using well, the, and, and by and by that i mean should we be citing the individual metrics rather than the working group repo uh and then the the other question that you have here is or or should we just or do we just want to have a blanket citation for chaos in general? Uh, so I'm not sure. So I know I know GitHub uh, has given us the ability to do the the citation.cff file, but that that really is designed for software, and I and I I don't I don't think it fits as well for uh, individual documents. Uh, and the, so and the question is, can we, from a copyright, I mean, from a citation perspective, the, the aim is to give the chaos organization credit for the work that we do and academics write about metrics and leverage our work. Do we want that to be at the, I mean, I think the repo level or the all of chaos level are the two ways that we could cite it using this kind of file. And that would make that would make sense and it would be less maintenance work than if we created citation files for every single metric which seems a bit too granular for what we're working on alternatively we hmm. could just provide a recommended citation for the individual metric at the bottom of the metric page similar to what we're doing now and and not link out to a cff file it's just a like this is our recommended citation uh, which would be, it would be fairly easy for us to create and keep maintained because it would be part of the metric. So when we, if we were to do, if we were to try to do an individual metric uh, CFF file or even a repo CFF file, that's one more file that we need to keep uh, updated and maintained. There's a contributor no. in each metric that um, that can double for this purpose and um, needs to be maintained anyway. It does take a little work to maintain any little gap of something inside of it. Um, and plus one, um, that was like, also I'm looking at that um, citation at the chaos level will tend to omit um, contributors apart so Lucas, yours was to your leaning was to have it at the individual metric level because the contributors are listed there anyway. And, and we, maybe update like the um, contributor list yeah we, we don't have that for all the metrics because we started it like i don't know just whatever halfway through or something like that mm -hmm. so there are like 30 metrics can okay, just make it up a number that don't have that contributor list so that might be a little bit of a problem and, and maybe those, it's not in what you're describing and those contributor lists are opt-in lists so mm -hmm you basically, you have to add your own name to them as we're, as we're creating them or editing them. And we do not, uh, we don't really go out of our way to add people to them. Yeah, in any case, I think doing the citation at a repo level makes uh, the work much more consistent with the works that are already available. Because if somebody is citing, let's say, at the evolution or at the rigs, you might be talking about something specific and you want to cite uh, the entire thing. Just as when we cite papers, we don't cite the particular chapter or the page, especially if we are using the IEEE. We cite the paper. I'm, I know there are other citations like the APA that can do something different. But if we go at the repo level, I mean, it's easy, like Kevin right, uh, suggested, it's easy for maintenance, it's easy for things. Then, notwithstanding, we can have one a bigger thing, let's say, for the kiosk project, because sometimes people are referencing the kiosk project and they know we handle 
metrics for community health. Somebody may just want to say at that, at that uh, higher level of granulite without talking with any specific metrics. So when they were talking on metrics, we can go on repo level. I actually I, think... Uh, oh, I, yeah, my analogy for citation was for chaos as a like, chaos is a book and each repo is a chapter. So if you cite a chapter, there's a way to cite a chapter. If you cite a book in entirety, there's a way to cite it. So providing a citation to each repo is just like similar to providing a citation for a chapter. And just citing the entire book is a, you can just do that. So for me, uh, like my two cent suggestion is for a repo level, we have a citation and for a kiosk level at a like higher level, it'll be a, a journal citation. So the the working group categorizations are a little bit arbitrary, right? So it's just it's wherever the metrics are being worked on. Uh, sometimes the sometimes that categorization makes sense, uh, and and sometimes it doesn't. So I I don't uh, I don't think citing it by the working group is that helpful actually. Uh, I think I would prefer to see it cited at that high level chaos level using the CFF file and then maybe have a recommended citation at the bottom of each individual metric uh, so that people can cite the specific metric when they're using them. Sounds like there's some consensus around probably using just putting something at the bottom of each metric. Because I heard Lucas and Kevin suggest that. I um, um, uh, um, do you still feel that that's a good practical approach, but I also um, very much appreciate the argument that standard practice is to be able to cite by book or chapter uh, and I think that authors might prefer that. So then the, the question then becomes, what's a chapter? Is a chapter the working group or is a chapter a metric? So I, I don't believe that the working group, I don't think, I don't believe that the working group is necessarily a chapter. Part of me would like to, I would like to believe that the working groups and the metrics that they hows are they're meant to go together so i mean yeah yeah that's yeah. what we've been yeah. doing for years so i think there is some some truth to that i i do understand the point that they can you know kind of move across chapters or working groups so to speak um but i i don't know i i think it's okay to at least we're just trying to locate people to a spot that's all and i just I think the easiest, whatever the easiest way to do this um, first is probably best. So even, I, I mean, my inclination is maybe just to do it at the chaos project full stop and just see what the uptake is on that yeah. before we overcomplicate and put things even at lower levels. So I don't even, I don't even know how well people will cite just the chaos project. Hmm. So no, it has been getting a lot of attention in in other projects, ecosystem, and even in, uh, in conference papers, I've seen a couple of. Now the thing might just be Good. why I think the the repo or the working group level might be uh, make, might make sense is in terms of reference because sometimes I even remember we had a discussion here with uh, with the evolution group and we consulted people like uh, uh, Tom. We we had this citation from for for ICSI. And the people went through the working group. I think at that moment there was some broken links or things, something like that. But they actually had to look at other metrics that we did not really mention. Just commenting on those gave us some kind of uh, insight that they are taking it seriously because they were actually saying, okay, yeah, these people cited this kiosk project, they work on this, and we saw, a, you know, they, they, they looked at the kiosk project as we are having some important discussion around this matrix so for that working i just think it's an indicator like a pointer 
then I still strongly suggest chaos is just the, where the bigger discussion happens. Going down at the lower level of granularity might be too much work, which cannot really impact more than because I mean, there are tons of metrics and when those citations are so many, if you have to cite, let's say four metrics, then just imagine the bulk of work, but one citation can work for all. So how about if we, we cite it, we create one CFF file for chaos and within that citation, we point them to the metrics release URL on the website, which then gives them all of the metrics that have been released. Okay. That's another this, alternative. Would that, uh, I, I think that kind of, I think that's uh, kind of would resolve maybe all of the discussions we're having. Yeah. Yeah. Then maybe we keep the same uh, CFF file in all the repos just for a, uh, access purpose. Like sometimes people are just looking at a particular repo and easy to find the CFF file within that repo. That's just one maintenance. Then. So or we can just create a pointer to it in the community. Yes. In the community. Yes. Repo, like a right? sim link. Yep. I, that, what, that sounds good to me. Yeah, that works for me. I think that, that solves all the different thoughts. And if later we need to get more precise, we'll worry about that later. I was going to strike through that, but I couldn't figure out how to do that. So I just deleted that part about the putting the CFF file in the in each metric. So it sounds like we've come to kind of an agreement to put um, to have people cite chaos in general. We'll put a link to the CFF file and then create a, a pointer to it in the community repo. Everybody cool with that? Do we have any other comments, questions? OK, uh, I will do that. There we go. Boom, done. Moving along, the sign. Okay, let's talk about the metrics release. Um, I believe this is gonna be Kevin as well. Put that in there. Uh, yep, this is just uh, me repeating what I had said last week. Uh, so just a request that all the working groups uh, go in and review their metrics and edit them. Uh, and the, the target that I would would like them to shoot for is October 15th, so that uh, uh, we can get the release ready for, uh, I think October 18th is the, the target date. Uh, and then also uh, make sure you're uh, uh, updating the translation repo when you're, uh, when you're making those edits. And then we do have a we 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 have come across an issue with the uh, with the metrics release and the standard template. Uh, currently, the the way we uh, the way the uh, the way the website is generated currently, uh, we're we pull markdown files into the website mm -hmm. and then it's converted into HTML. Uh, and in that process, some of our relative links are being destroyed. Uh, so we're uh, we're trying to figure that out currently. And it does this issue uh, is affecting the uh, Mars automated metrics release as well. So uh, we have some possible fixes. Uh, uh, one of the fixes may entail actually going through and making uh, getting rid of uh relative links in the metrics uh, but we're not quite sure what we're doing yet but we are we are investigating and it hopefully we'll have it resolved before the uh the release occurs uh okay. so how are we going to convert all the relative to absolute links in all the working groups uh well i'm, I'm not i'm not sure if we need to do that yet so we we actually we need to meet and discuss that in, in more detail uh, for the release team I, i'd rather not have that conversation here
Any questions other than that? Comments? Anything else for Kevin and the metrics release team? Yeah, I would like to add and comment. Even if we are using the absolute links instead of relative links, I think we have a, uh, we have found a way to adapt Mars to use the absolute links. So uh, you can find the link for the possible fix uh, that contains the uh, fix for converting absolute to relative links uh, while using Mars. So even if we are using absolute links, it should not pose a problem the way the metrics are being uh, released into the PDF. Yeah, awesome. I'm going to trust that the metrics release team has everything sorted out or will have it all sorted out. Totally trust you all. and You're doing a good job. So thank you. Um, I want to call out that there's an open PR from Vinod on the uh, value uh, group. Oh, okay. Like just in terms of uh, like for the metrics release, Lucas? Yeah, exactly. exactly. Okay. That's okay. good to sort out because they don't meet this week, I don't think. Hmm. Or do they? I kind of forget. Nope. No, so they, they don't. They don't. So uh, in you the last... Sort. Do, can yeah, you ping somebody to take a look at that? Yes, I'll do it. Like last time, we discussed all thing about the releases in the meeting, and I've created a PR based on that discussion. So it just need to be like reviewed and merged. I'll... Maybe you could just tag me on that if okay. I'm not. Okay. okay. Is that just removing the uh, the disclaimer header text? Uh, it was removing the disclaimer and some minor changes, not much. But that was based on the discussion on the meeting, uh, value working meeting. So other working groups who are not meeting this week, if you are in one of those, maybe take a quick look and make sure that there aren't any other open PRs based on the feedback from the public review. Um, that way we can get that sorted for Kevin and the team by uh, whatever day, the 15th is Friday, I guess. So when we when we go through to start doing the release, uh, if, I, if we find some that, that still need to be looked at, I will start tagging people. Uh, so, so maybe maybe another request I would have is that if uh, mm. uh, during this process, if I if I uh, tag you in a in a pull request or an issue, if you could try to be responsive, that would be very helpful. All right, sounds good. Any final comments on the metrics release? Okay, let's move on then. Um, so it occurred to me that we never, in the confusion of ChaosCon, OSSNA, metrics release, we never really talked about Hacktoberfest, which if you're not familiar with it, runs through the month of October and it's supposed to um, bring people into open source uh, who have never maybe um, submitted a pull request uh, before. So we have participated in the past with varying results um, just wanted to bring that up if we want to participate, like it's already the 12th, so <laughs> yeah. maybe too late. I don't know. Um, what do y'all think? I, I don't think, I mean, I can speak for Augur. I don't think we're in a position to participate this year. We just did a major release and <clears throat> it's already the 12th, so. Yeah. <laughs> You didn't receive your t-shirt from last year anyway. <laughs> For those who don't know, that's really the whole point is, not the whole point, but if you submit a pull request, then you get a t-shirt. And with, I guess sometimes that doesn't actually happen, so. Well, and it's I think a, a lot of us- It says one, one PR or I guess it was six PRs or something. I don't know whether, that's how four, I received mine like PRs. two years back. Four PRs. Matt didn't get Matt Cantu didn't get his either. Yeah. <laughs> Eighteen and nineteen, but not in twenty twenty. <laughs> <laughs>
I mean, to be honest with you, last year when we did it, like a lot of the PRs are like a a comma. <laughs> yeah, they are super helpful. In some, in I some mean, case. I know it's editing and that's cool and all, but <laughs> I don't know. It doesn't really feel like it's the spirit of what Hacktoberfest is supposed to be about. <laughs> right. Now, it, it seems like it's it's become a little, uh, I suppose you could, it's gamified right so yeah. there people are doing minimum effort to get the t-shirt or uh to to say that they've participated i'm not i'm not sure hacktoberfest has a great reputation mm -hmm. uh with open source projects over the over the past couple of years i know so well and especially when people are actually doing the prs and then not getting their shirts like that kind of not really it's great motivator. <laughs> okay, so uh, I'm just going to say probably thumbs down then for that. Yeah, and we can I, I'm okay with that. Um, okay, so the next one says invest chaos money, question mark. And I'm going to guess the, that the, Matt G. Yeah, they, oh, so <laughs> I was just thinking about this. So we have like, we have two accounts, right? We have one Bitcoin? at LFX. What's that? Bitcoin, Dogecoin, what are we talking? I don't know. I mean, like, I mean, we just, we have two accounts and they're basically just cash accounts. Yeah. They just sit there. And um, it's not like we have to invest it. It was just a, a thought that came to me. Like, yeah, I mean, I think in the yeah. past, we've, we've not had quite enough money to invest in things or people that we wanted to invest in. So what's our total? Do we know? Uh, it's roundly, four, roughly. 10,000. Okay. Mm -hmm. Is there? I, um, vote, I vote we um, donate a substantial amount of it to small projects. That's my opinion. I know last year we funded a student. I can't remember the name of the program. It wasn't Season of Docs. It was something else. Well, Outreachy. Outreachy. Yeah. Uh, are we planning to do that this year? Because that probably would cover an Outreachy person or come pretty close. Um, I, that wasn't. I was just asking if we wanted to invest the money. <laughs> it's like, <laughs> right. Well, spend it. Like if we wanted to support other projects or do Outreachy, but. I mean, these are good investments we've made before. That's why. No, I meant like invested in the stock market. I meant like invested like in a mutual fund. And we, okay. that was like quite literal. Like I just meant like take like $2,000 and we, but I, I, we're not really set up to do this. I don't know if we can do it. I, it was just some a thought that came to my mind. I just kind of hate looking at dollars just sit there as cash. Yeah, that's all. So I I would um I wonder about the larger aspirations of the core team. What are your what are your biggest goals? For what point are you on, Lucas? Six on, on uh, uh, how to invest this money. Oh yeah, I haven't even, I haven't thought through any of this at all. <laughs> I literally that sentence there that was about as far as my brain went. <laughs> hmm. I mean if, if we were if we were to in, invest it we probably we probably need to decide how much money we would want to keep in like yeah. an operations account uh and and my guess is I mean 10,000 is probably a pretty good number for an operations account for us because our we don't have a ton of costs. Uh, I mean, this this money is primarily used to run chaos cons and uh, possibly uh, mentorship. Uh, or maybe I would, I would be inclined if we want to invest the money to invest it in something that advances the <clears throat> chaos community sponsoring travel for chaos con speakers or something like that, or having swag that we give to all chaos members or yep, I, I agree getting, with that. paying an agency to redo our website or paying for outreachy students. These are all things that invest in the community itself. This wouldn't be like against that, I mean, that could still occur. This is just, I've been looking at these accounts sitting as cash accounts 
ever since we've kind of started this project. That's all. The money's not working. Like it's not doing anything. Right. That's all. And I'm not saying like take the entirety out and we have no operating ability. It was, again, it was just a thought and it doesn't sound like it's being picked up super well. So that's okay. With the, I don't know what, uh, what the current rates are, but last I checked, they were small. And so it would be adding, I don't know, a hundred dollars per year or so. Yeah, I don't know if it's worth the overhead. If someone is interested in exploring the topic, I mean, I'd be happy to learn more and be convinced otherwise. I would, I would like to, I would like to uh, have more conversations about mm. how we can invest that money in the community uh, to what to what Georg was saying, uh, rather than rather than just having it sit there. What are what are some th other things that we can do to help uh, build our community? or support our community. So apparently this group is risk averse, I think is what, <laughs> what we've come to. <laughs> yeah, um, okay. I think we kind of can probably move on then since we kind of, okay, awesome. And, and maybe it'll come back up, you know, it'll resurface maybe later on. So we'll see how it goes, but for now we'll put that on hold. Um, the next one is the operations team. How should we start organizing this work? So this is also me. So as we, you know, Yash and Ritik, who are on. Hello, Yash and Ritik. Had, or as we call you, operations team. As the operations <laughs> team. I think it might be, so now that we're kind of getting through the metrics release, we might want to think about how we probably just need to start meeting at some, at some point and talk about like what needs to be done um, across the project, across the chaos project to kind of normalize work for all. Or for example, we have the DEI audit, like how we think about rolling these kind of things out. Um, so it's just a thought as to how we maybe start organizing work and expressing that work to the community. Cause I, just all the stuff that you two had done with the metrics release really kind of brought forward the importance of of standardizing things across the project. So, so the action item here is um, a meeting. Probably so. I, it seems like it's something that should have at least a biweekly cadence or something like that where we, you know, assign just like what we do here, right? Or just in any of our working groups. Do we think about the work that needs to be done? We think about how the, that work gets done. And then we'd have a team that could kind of, kind of like what Yash and Rotik had done over the summer with the release, you know, kind of always expressing like, hey, we're gonna be hanging out in your working group for a little while and we need to update your readme files. And just so when you see some PRs, that's what those things are. Um, Uh, do we need to figure out who's on this team? Do we know who's on this team already? Well, uh, no, we don't. Kevin, Yash, and Ritik, I think. And me. And I'm happy yeah, yeah. to be on that team. I would, <laughs> I, would, I, would, I, would, I would probably be on that team too, right? Yeah. Yeah, I was, I was going to say this sounds a lot like some of the stuff that I already do. So. Yeah. Yeah, I'm happy to be on this team. I think we can start by having a one-off meet and then we can figure out how do you want to proceed from there. That sounds like a good idea. Okay, so action item is to coordinate. Yeah, and we can just, we can sync through Slack. Okay, perfect. Right time. Yeah, yeah. I'm happy to participate at the outset since I think Kevin is counting on me for some plug-in stuff. Okay. 
Cool. Uh, well, I mean, the, the website can certainly fall into the yeah, uh, I mean, I the category this... of operations, but I, but I don't know that it's necessarily, uh, it doesn't necessarily have to. Yeah, it's the metrics publishing piece that I think is operations and related. Uh, and the, the coordination, yeah, coordination between working groups is is kind of how I view it. So yep. any, anything that involves coordination between working groups. Yeah, yeah, just an, you know, put me on there for now and we'll see how needed I am. Alrighty. Okay, <clears throat> we have about 10 minutes left and we have a few other things to talk about. So um, <clears throat> let's go ahead and move forward if that's cool with everybody. Um, the next one on there is the DCO sign off. So I also put that on there. There is an issue. Um, and so the, the question that had come up and folks can correct me if I'm not getting it quite right, but the, the DCO sign off, there it is from Matt Cantu is can really actually cause some complications with people on their pull requests, possibly leading to attrition in pull requests, number one. Um, and in fact, I think if uh, I don't remember which one, which working group it is, but I mean, there's a, a PR that's sitting in there that doesn't have DCO sign off and we really can't technically do anything with it until it has a DCO sign off. But um, then the other thing is, is that I think DCO requires that you put your full name and your email address in there that some people may not want to put for a PR. Um, so from an anonymity perspective, it kind of is not great. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's respect designed, to that. It's explicitly designed not to really enable anonymity. Yes. Um, so anyway, that's that's the point. I thought we it would be worth bringing it up here. See if other people have comments. I mean, I followed the discussion on the issue. It, it, it seems it seems like we have to have it. So um, it's just something we have to work with. Uh, I want to uh, plus one that getting rid of it or modifying it, find some, finding some other way to do it. I, I found that the DCO request can be more work than all the rest of the project. So it discourages me from doing stuff. Yep. Matt, do you think this is something that LF would be flexible on? I am. Or allow sorry. us to oh, like yeah. sorry. have an opt-in, you know, or, or a provision for those who don't want to do it? I would be happy to check. No problem there. I think the um, the article that was um, that I shared in the last section of that issue, if you could click on that, it basically just says like it's not a CLA, and it does it does not have it's just one argument towards this, but that's kind of what I agree with at this point. Um, like putting your name on something does not necessarily mean you're signing anything. Uh, that's what I'm kind of trying to say here is that there's no context for the agreement. I don't know. Um, just food for thought. I think that's the best argument we can make towards the LF is the legal aspect of it. And then now is a good time to check this and review it because we need to change the charter of the chaos project where it's required. And so that is something the governing board when we meet next month, hey. no, this month. Um, we can talk about that, vote on that, and then we can, uh, if we already, I know we need to work with the Linux Foundation when we change the charter, so that conversation needs to happen. So Matt, thank you for checking on that. Sure, no problem. I'll follow up today. Salona had a comment in the chat as well. DCO is often broken or easily broken. Um, I guess we monitor for it just in, only in the sense of as a check on yeah. GitHub. What, I, what I've seen happen a lot is um, it's really easy to get around it and it breaks often. And so sometimes you'll get stuff in that's not actually been done correctly. And so periodically you have to go through and make sure that everything was actually signed. Um, and so I, I suggest either monitoring it or doing a a monthly check and going and reminding people who put things in um, that it wasn't done correctly to go back in and fix it. 
Yeah, we don't do that. We do not. No. <laughs> yeah. I think if you go through and do a look, you'll sit there and see some things that might disturb you a little. I know I have pushed things through where I just check mark. No, nah, I don't need it. Yeah. I know it, it's there. Yeah, and it's and it's one of those things where um there were some weird things happening where I think it was breaking a lot on the web interface. So basically anyone who is doing web-based was definitely not getting them through for a while. I don't know if that's still true. I just know that I've watched it break multiple times. And so um, hmm. the command line seems to do better, but there were times where um, we couldn't get things, we couldn't get builds done because of it. And so they would turn it off and then turn, and forget to turn it back on or things of that nature. So just, just be very aware that DCO is, is really wonky. And my best suggestion on that is if you're doing it, I would do a monthly check to go sit there and see and, and nag everyone on there to go back in and sign it afterwards. I have personally experienced with the DCO. I have signed off, it was proper exactly, but I was getting DCO failed. And then I asked the maintainer to bypass it, like to accept it. The signature is there, it's being displayed, but DCO is not clearing it, so. Yeah, yeah. And like I said, that was a frequent break when you were using, I don't know if you were using command line or um, graphic. interface, gra a graphical interface. Yeah. yeah, and that happens a lot on the graphical interface. I've seen it happen, I don't know how many times. So it's not you, it's them. Um, but yeah, it is, it is a problem. So, sorry. I have a super quick question. Is this, is DCO, and this is just my own ignorance, is it something that's pretty prevalent across open source? So one, if that's the case, then one thing we might consider ourselves as like helping people figure that out, um, even though it's a barrier to us, but like maybe we can assist other people in figuring it out so that it's not a barrier to another open source project that they want to participate in. Mm. Um, that could be kind of something we help with. I don't know. There, Liz, um, there is like um, GitHub knows. <laughs> and I've, uh, this has been a many years uh, journey for me of complaining. So yes, more people complaining on it would be great. Um, but I don't know why the hell they don't <laughs> do this. So I'm, yeah, it's it's been the bane of my existence, um, as you can imagine, because I even had problems with it at PayPal. So um, yeah, it's, it's, it's an issue and GitHub knows it's an issue. And so I don't know why they refuse to prioritize it because it's a pretty serious issue. Um, but maybe more people bringing it up will help. So please, please also go, go hit them over the head like I did for a while. <laughs> I was thinking more of like help, like documenting how to do it through the, uh, the command line. For, okay. Since that one's broken, I was thinking like maybe we could help people who are new to open source, you know, or new to our project. Here's how you do it. But I totally agree. Like it should be fixed. And, it's still, and, and it still sometimes breaks on the command line too. Um, with a really complex one, sometimes it'll still break there as well. Um, especially we had that hyperledger because we had some really complex things that came through and it would just go and explode all over the place. Um, but uh, it's definitely an ongoing thing with the graphical user interface. So yes, most definitely. And the, the, it, it's, it's buggy. <laughs> But that way, it's buggy. <laughs> that's good that so many projects use that. That's, that's great. <laughs> yeah, I know. I know. It's like one of those things where uh, I call it one of the dirty little secrets of GitHub, honestly, at this point, because I'm just like, seriously, guys, come on. <laughs> so, yeah. Sorry. Yeah. Oh, you're fine. So, so I've seen um, a bunch of projects using a CLA checker, um, but the DCO checker is, is less frequent because it's so burdensome <laughs> and you know, developers are as lazy as they could possibly get away with for good reason. Yeah, the CLA checker that I've been looking at is a little bit different. It's basically making sure, I think mostly that, um, uh, like it's, it's referential. It's going through and making sure that all the people who are doing the different things are doing it, but I don't know that it's live. Mm -hmm. So, huh? Uh, uh, um, well, I have seen it uh, used uh, live. Okay. Sorry. Cool. 
cool because the one that I was looking at it was like something that I'd like run um, periodically and then it would tell me oh yes all of your maintainers are on there and then and then they upgraded it to being oh yes all of your maintainers and anyone who's done a contribution has done it and things of that nature but I didn't know if it had actually gone live yet I just knew that it was something that I it was some scripts I could go run periodically to make sure that um you know I had them so thanks I haven't done this recently though. So don't, don't listen to me. I haven't done anything in about a year and a half. So, you know. And DCO sign off and CLAs also address very different concerns and they're done for very different purposes. Yeah. So they, and it's they harder. Yeah, sorry, sorry, Georg. And it's harder to get um, corporate employees to do the CLAs. Um, it's, and so sometimes that's why they hide their work is so that they don't have to deal with the corporate CLA. Um, and so they'll go and like be sneaky and sit there and go, ha ha ha, this is me as an individual. Um, so that they don't have to worry about all of that. Because, you know. Okay, um, sorry to cut this short, but we are out of time and we had two items left on our agenda. Um, is that okay, Matt C and Nicole? This was your your brand kit. Is brand that okay kit, yeah. to postpone those? Yep. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Sorry about that. Um, we will talk about those things very first thing next next week. And um, otherwise, we're good to go. Thanks everybody for coming. I will stop sharing my screen. Thanks. Thank you. And we are Thanks, done. Everyone. Have I'll, a good day, buy, I'll have to buy Bitcoin with chaos money later, everybody. <laughs> Matt, Matt, don't don't reference me when you talk to the LF. I won't, don't worry. Hey. <laughs>